Hey everybody, thanks for uh, downloading the podcast. If you're listening to us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, also hit that like button, and hit that little bell on the side so it'll let you know exactly when we upload videos so you can be the first one to listen to the Collective Podcast. Also check us out on our website where we dump all of our wonderful content. We have other content dumping soon, which we'll get later into the podcast. But as uh, I like to remind everybody, and so does Jerry. Jerry? Get that leg! Hello, everybody. This is Collective Podcast over here, episode 8. Gerard speaking, Christian, as always, nodding his head to the side, ignoring me, but Christian, how are you today? I am doing absolutely great. It's the 4th of July weekend. Or half of the 4th of July weekend. Well, it's kind of like an advantage that way. Is it, is it really the weekend when 4th of July lands in the middle of the week? But here's the good thing, though. You kind of get to celebrate it twice. Mm. You have like a pre-party, the real thing, and the after party. So you could say, like, we're tailgating... Yeah. Before the party, or as Joe likes to say, wrapping a party before the party. Exactly. Or the meeting about the meeting. There's always meetings about meetings before we have the parties about the parties. So I think we just hit a record. What's uh, that? About about 20 seconds into the podcast, we've already mentioned Joe. Uh, He's getting yeah. more popular. He's getting more popular. At least between the two of us. We want to get him a posse. We want to get him lots of girls. This mystique around Joe is. Uh, Joe, right. fund me. Joe, it's we're gonna get a Joe fund me campaign. But, uh, so yeah, so last week, Jerry, or the last podcast, we had uh, John Gregorio on for that big E3 extravaganza. Oh, yes, I really cared about that one. It was yeah. amazing. Jerry, uh, for those of you that don't see it, uh, actually uh, was asleep on his bed, not really paying attention. And then he would pop up and be like, yeah, well, that, that game, Mario Tennis. Reality speaks for itself, and that is not fake news. <laughs> But at the same time, Jerry did contribute because he was such an awesome guy. And, and I and I still asked about NFL Street. I have to throw that in there. Oh, yeah. He's like, how's the NFL games? It's like nobody watches E3 for the NFL games. But it's like watching Welcome to Mooseport. Welcome to Mooseport. <laughs> it killed Jerry. Jerry plays games, and then, and then it kills the game's career. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Gene so, Hermanson uh, style. So yeah, so uh, before we get into our topics and the big one, which I'm going to keep a secret, the big topic that's going to be part of the podcast until after the break to keep everybody in suspense. Um, but uh, I just want to announce to everybody that um, we will be switching over to video formatted podcasts Woo! in the foreseeable future, which probably won't be until the second half of the year. Which you say, Christian, it's July, it is the second half of the year. Well, towards the end of the second half of the year. Exactly. So, maybe we'll have it in November, maybe December. Of 2020? Sure. Of 2020? No. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Upcoming projects. Finally, me and Jimmy. Oh, I, I love when the voice projects. Me and Jimmy are going to record Collective Gaming. And the first game that we're recording, Jerry, is uh, an old school game from the 1988 from the original Nintendo called Maniac Mansion. It's a game Jimmy loves. He's oh, I've played that. He's been playing it as a kid. He knows it in and out. Him and me are going to be playing Doesn't it. Larry play that game a lot? Yeah, yeah Larry plays that game okay. a lot too. We're also going to have... Well, that's Jimmy's where he's going to play on the first episode. And then the second episode that comes out, of course, we're going to be playing Sonic the Hedgehog. Which is me, which is of course. Oh know. man! Oh man! Oh man! We'll uh, we'll talk about the upcoming movie in in a little bit, which I just remembered off the top of my head. Which we'll I'll cram that into our topics soon enough. But yeah, we're doing collective gaming finally, Jerry. A star strutted announcement has announcement. finally occurred to us. Uh, the movie that we're in pre production for might get pushed back a little bit longer. I mean, we might. It might not be shot this year. It might be shot early next year. We're having a little bit of issues, kind of. I wouldn't say issues, but it's a little... Um, we're in like a rewrite, kind of. 
always understand that whenever we have these types of circumstances, hug it out. Yes. I hugged the shit out of Christian just earlier today. Well, I For mean, no reason. Uh, so, uh, just to be full transparent about it, Chris, who's writing it, finished the script, and then he wanted to do a little bit of a rewrite. And within the rewrite, he realized, oh, I can make this even better, because it was already a great script, but let me take it up a little more of a notch. And it's currently being rewritten. It's the same concept as it was, but uh, we might not be able to hit the date of October that we wanted to shoot. Chris says yes, but I don't. I don't think so. But the how good, about this? Yeah. Let's have a voting record yeah. on this as well. Yeah. So we'll we'll have a Facebook poll if you think we're going to get this done in October. But so when this is released, I will be asking you all if we will get this done in October, <laughs> and it's going to be one person yes, everybody else. But <laughs> yes, indeed. But um, if we don't shoot it in October, we're still going to be shooting something, which would be like a trailer or something. Who knows? Um, I'm not saying any of this is permanent. I could just be talking out of my mouth or out of my ass. Whichever, you can't really decide which is which, whether it's I'm talking out of my ass or my mouth. Wherever the shit um, comes out. Yeah, well, I mean, it could come out either way, whichever. But, yeah, so that's all the announcements for us. Jerry, you have uh, an event, something? I do have an event for July 28th at Planet Rose. It is a collaborative event between Sunrise Day Camp and Dare to Run. So with that event, uh, we have Rochelle, who is the head runner of Dare to Run, a women's political organization that encourages women to run for office, and Sunrise Day Camp, helping to give summer back to children with cancer. It's going to be a great event. We're anticipating close to 100 people for it. Tickets are always up for grabs, and we definitely encourage you, if you're a singer or if you're not, come out and have a great time. Awesome. Uh, that's the other event you were telling me about, the uh, food crawl, or was that... The food crawl? Yeah, the food crawl. Oh, boy, the food crawl. Yes. Still a work in progress. If all goes to plan, expect the food crawl to occur between August 6th to August 10th, all five days. And uh, potentially one of the uh, the uh, food carts that are going to be there is uh, our little sponsor, Da Piera. Da Piera. We'll, we'll, we'll get to our sponsors later. My hand gestures are in a action right now. Yes. Up here, um, it's great food. Go, um, so yes. Yeah, so our first topic, which I didn't even realize, is a Superman gets his AARP card. Ooh. He's a, so he's been having his AARP card. Well, yeah, because he's Superman just turned eighty, eighty years old. He looks great for his age. Yeah, I gotta great. say that that Kryptonian uh, aging process. Um, so yeah, so it just it just happened. I know it's July, but it just happened. It was in June. Uh, I found this article in the Advance uh, about Superman, which all of his uh, great milestone comic books. Jerry's nodding at me, just like yeah. Yeah, yeah. baby. To put this in the topics that Jerry is like, oh, I guess. Do Do you want to go lie down and I'll talk? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Have a great so, night, guys. <laughs> so, so Superman first appeared in June of 1938 with Action Comics. Yep. Uh, I don't know how much that's worth. Um. And this article talks about some of its big comic book um, milestones. Uh, Injustice, Gods Among Us, which is most recent. Uh, Action Comics, number 1000. All-Star Superman. Superman Birthright. Red Sun. Which is funny, because Red Sun is takes Superman, and what if he landed in Russia instead of Kansas? Which is a pretty cool <laughs> That's pretty ironic. Yeah. The Wedding of Superman, Kingdom Come... Uh, the Death of Superman, which is the big one from the 90s, which everyone loves. But, uh, so, Jerry... Now he came back to be 80 years old. Yeah, but Jerry, so, uh, we've had a bunch of Superman characters, people playing Superman. George Reeves, Christopher Reeves, not related to each other. Yeah. Um, what's... I, I drawn a blank on, um, who played him in the 90s. Shout out to Andrew Slips, who plays a solid Superman in Halloween a few years ago. Oh, yeah. Hair was oh, on point. His hair was on... His hair was really on point. He could have played Superman better than... Uh, Brandon Superman. Rolf did. No, than Brandon Rolfe did in... Um, in... Uh, in... Superman Returns. SAG act, the SAG Actors uh, Union? Yeah. Please get an Andrew Slips. Give him the opportunity that he deserves. Lois and Clark. Sorry, guys. I'm type. I'm trying. I'm looking up uh, Lois and Clark. 
the new adventures of superman because i'm blanking on the name oh dean king dean king played superman oh boy dean king um guy I just mentioned for superman returns and henry cavill uh did you see any of the superman movies with christopher reeve superman oh way one, back two, three, four. way back one which, which one's your favorite I'm going to say the first one was very influential. You got me really nervous, Jerry. I thought you were going to say Superman 4 for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Superman 4, the one that the one that everyone loves. Oh, the, yeah. The quest for peace. So, Jerry, who's your favorite uh, Superman actor? It's always a tough one for me, but Christopher Reeves. Most iconic. Definitely has stood the test of time for what he's done in the role. And people just always uh, always associate him with the part of Superman. So I would have to say for me that's definitely somebody who comes first to mind. And I think that's important when you're in kind of that franchise mode. When you're like always having those movies and stuff like that. The, f- the first person that comes to mind in association is always going to be the one that usually has the best performance. So, to the so, masses. So Christopher Reeve. To the masses. Yeah, everybody everybody says Christopher Reeve is the definitive Superman, even though Henry Cavill is giving him a run for his money. He's really good at Superman. Really good Superman in terrible movies, but that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's for another, another topic for another day. Um, real quick, for those of you that might have heard a cut, it's because we're having the same issue that happened two podcasts ago. Hopefully it holds out so I don't have to uh, chop this up and edit it and get a headache. Um, anyway, so moving on. Uh, we had a bunch of celebrity deaths. We talked about a celebrity death last podcast and now more, more happening. Um, now that's been happening every week, I feel like. Yeah. So we had uh, Richard Harrison from Pawn Stars. Died. Yeah, that was a shame. Yeah, the old man. Uh, he put the definition... <laughs> Is that of... how you're going to remember him? No, that's his name. <laughs> I'm joking. Yeah. No, uh, that... he, uh, he, he, he gave the definition of crotchety old man to a whole new definition. <laughs> Cheap. Didn't want to sell any... Well, didn't want to buy anything... They didn't want to give anybody like money, uh, uh, not money, but didn't want to give anybody like high price on pawn stars. So it's like you gave him this piece of gold. You know, I'll give you like a hundred bucks. Yeah, but it's worth like two fifty. Okay, I'll give you one twenty-five. <laughs> An avid negotiator, mm-hmm. yeah. to say the least. But I, I, pawn stars is one of my favorite shows ever. It's just, it's funny because I would watch it, and then like. I would have to go out, and they would have those marathons on every, every Thursday. And I would, my dad for being one of the viewers on that one. Oh, yeah. He loves that show. Oh, me too. Like, And then what's funny is I would go, okay, I have to go out and do something. I'd be like, let me finish watching this episode of Porn Stars. Okay, it's over with. And then another one would pop up, and it would go, here's today on Porn Stars. You'd see all these <laughs> items. you go, oh, man, I have to... I have to see... Uh, I have to see if it's on Craigslist. No, no, I have to see how much this one goes for. It's pretty cool. Uh, this one time, this guy came in with a hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars worth of gold. No silver, worth the silver. Is this a, was this a newer episode? No, this was like maybe five or six years Got ago. It. But I was like, holy shit! That's unbelievable. That's really mm-hmm. unbelievable, though. And I have a funny um, story about porn stars. It was um, I did an internship way back when in like 2011, 2012, where they. They were one of the people that helped. The story is still good. Yeah, the one that, that helped start to create Pawn Stars. So I edited a little bit of a sizzle reel for them for Pawn Stars. Got no credit for it, obviously, because I was an intern. But um, I remember I called up my mom as I was walking back to the bus to go home. I was like, Mom, I did. I edited an episode of Pawn Stars. And there was silence on the other end. She's, and I'm like, what's wrong? She goes, oh. You were editing porn? <laughs> and I'm like, no, porn. Porn. Listen to the New York accent. Porn. Porn stars. 
Oh, porn stars. Yeah, porn stars. Not porn stars. It's the one time a New York accent can really give you an advantage in yeah, a situation. it's the or, not coffee. Exactly. Co- co- coffee. 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 But, uh... <laughs> I love how I still pronounced it wrong. Uh, but, um... Did, did you watch porn stars? Do you watch any of the History Channel shows? I definitely watch porn stars. Okay, yeah. Um... Maybe like once a year. Yeah, once a year. Yeah. <laughs> Usually when I'm here and I turn your non-existent TV on. I don't know. For some reason, I it, it, everything's just black and white without the white. Mm. Let's move on. Uh, uh, Joe Jackson died. Michael Jackson's father. Yeah. That guy. Preach, Jerry. The problem with people like Joe Jackson <laughs> is that when you have a talent on your case, or the five of them in this particular case, and you're just in that zone, you want to push them to their limits, you want to make sure that they're really bringing the best out of each other and for themselves, and then your religion gets in the way of that, and you become even more greedy for it, that's ridiculous. Mm. That it, It's ridiculous. It shows emotional damage, not, not only for the brothers and stuff, for Michael Jackson himself, and that rest in peace to him as oh, well. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah, it happened around this time, 2009. 2009. 2009. Yeah, there's a lot of like conspiracy theories about Michael Jackson was dead did to him. I, it's funny. I bring that up because I I was on YouTube just watching or listening to uh, Joe Rogan's podcast. They had a whole thing about how Michael Jackson could have been like castrated as a kid, and that's why he had that high pitched voice all his life and. The, all the other weird conspiracy theory stuff. I have no opinion about whether he did all that other stuff he did because, like, I was a little too young to remember that. You know, all the child stuff, yeah. That Jackson movie, though, I actually have a little story about that. Mm-hmm. So the one that was made in 1992, one of my uh, former co-workers at my last job, he actually had an extra in that particular movie, and he almost got one of the brother roles in it, too. Nice. It took one line for him to do, and unfortunately, in the spur of the moment, he butchered the line, and that's what separated him to get that role from the extra. Damn. Hey, look, it happens. It happens in uh, acting and in, um, what's the word? Uh, It happens to us on radio. Yeah, yeah. I sound very monotone, like, hello. I laugh at my own jokes. You laugh at your own non-funny jokes. That's what happens. Uh, and um, a disc jockey, Dan Ingram. I had to, I had to refresh your memory on who it was because you knew, but you didn't know he right. died. Um, I don't, I don't think he was doing any disc jockeying for maybe like ten years, but I remember him as a kid hearing the radio and his name and stuff. And yeah, I figured that was a pretty, he was a pretty, I believe, influential uh, uh, disc jockey. I know a lot of people that went into radio and disc jockey was really influenced by him. I'm sure of it. Yeah. So, what was with the celebrity deaths, Jerry? Say it again? Those were the celebrity yes. deaths. Yes. Yes. Um, Rest in peace to all of them, yes, though. Yes. Uh, we're halfway through the year, so it's uh, shocking. Uh, okay, so 4th of July, Jerry. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We have a lot, of, a lot of great, interesting stories about 4th of July. But one of the big ones I want to talk about, Jerry, is my favorite thing that makes Ian throw up. Every time I mention it. Drum roll, please. Nathan's hot dog eating contest. Oh, yeah. Joey oh, Chestnut Joey's is going to probably ro- win because it's rigged, but it's going to be a great competition. Now, how is it rigged, Jerry? How is it rigged? Techniques, man. Techniques. Techniques. Technique. So I'm going to... It's like to... Squidward with the clarinet. All techniques. Technique, technique. So I'm going to read you off. Well, back in uh, first in 2011, they started a women's division, which is just funny to begin with, thinking, you know... Save yourself yeah, from the innuendos. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. It's a PG show. Uh, anyway, I wasn't thinking of any innuendo, but uh, you, you put it in my head. Um, but the men's competition, Joey Chestnut, has been winning every year, except one. He got defeated in 2015 by Matt Stoney. 
Oh, I know Matt Sony. Yeah. He he does a lot of YouTube videos of just yeah. him eating. I watch, I'm just mesmerized. I watch. I go, how can you eat any of that? He ate like 100 or 200 cookies in one sitting, chocolate chip, chips ahoy cookies. In what span of time? Do you do you recollect any of that? 20 minutes. Two, wait, 100 to two. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah, 100 to 200 in like 20 minutes or some, something like that. He, he ate a turducken in like 45 minutes. Wow. Yeah, it's all on his YouTube. I like, I'm like mesmerized by him. I like watch it. I don't know why. But... <laughs> Excuse me, but last year Joey Chestnut ate seventy-two hot dogs. Se- yeah, because I remember when I first heard about him, and I think he was about to reach sixty. This is like two thousand seven, two thousand eight, or something like that. And for him, it's just funny that you know you're you you've been so prone to this throughout mm-hmm. like your whole career, and now you got up to seventy-two in such a sh- short span of time. Oh yeah, like there's the guy that used to win all the time before him. Which is Kobayashi. Oh, uh, from Japan? Yeah, from Japan. He, Got it. He's when I first started. I started watching a hot dog eating contest in like 03, 04. It was just amazing. You sit there, you go, this little guy is eating 53 and a half hot dogs. The way he preps, though. I saw yeah. something on True Life about him mm-hmm. when I was in high school. This guy is eating salads to expand yeah. his stomach. Well, like look at it like this. like um, Before Kobayashi won... In the year 2000, there was another Japanese guy. He won with 25 hot dogs. And then when Kobayashi won the first year, it was 50. So he doubled Mm. what the first guy did. And then ever since then, it's been 50 hot dogs, 60 hot dogs. One year was an eat-off. It it was just ridiculous. Have the rules, like, kind of changed over time? Um, I think they lowered the time. So, like, when Kobayashi... Um, was winning. It was like twelve minutes, and then when Joey Chestnut first won, it was twelve minutes, and then they changed it in 08 to ten minutes. Oh wow! But, but it's funny. I I always love when they when they read off, like, um, how you qualify for. It's like it's it's Eater X who qualified for this contest by eating two hundred and fifty. Uh, cannolis and you're like how the hell are you eating cannolis he wins the world record for most donuts eaten what he's the most um corned beef and cabbage it's like what are you doing oh god corned beef and cabbage yeah oh no 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 it's like the most random food it's like uh what's it else sticks no yeah it's like oh joe would love that uh, or this one would be like this guy ate 20 pounds of pancakes it's like oh my god how do you do that joe we have hope in you mm. But this year it's going to be interesting. They always have a women's division, which looks like the same woman's been winning for the last four years. Yeah, four years. Um, and there was another another woman called Black Widow, which I mean, you have to win if you're Speaks Black for Widow. Itself. Yeah. But um, so Jerry, so how many hot dogs do you think you can eat? In 10 minutes? No, yeah. Well, I was going to say... I was going to say 10 minutes, but... Let's like, try it right now. In like... <laughs> no. In like a sitting. Like, how many... How many... Before you get full and you're just like, no, nah, I can't do it anymore. If I push myself in 10 minutes, mm-hmm. which I hope to do so by Wednesday, <laughs> I'm going to have my own Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. In your backyard. I can see myself doing 5 to 6. If I really push myself. In one sitting... I can probably do 10. Damn. I could probably... And then you'd have to run to the gym. No. Yes. Uh, Literally from my house to the gym, no yeah. car. Yeah. Uh, uh, me would be two. Because I'm skinny. And I don't have a high... Meta- and I have a very fast metabolism. And I have stomach issues. I'll train you. <laughs> yeah. So we'll train. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll run on the beach to, um, to Hearts on Fire... And we'll, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll drive to Philly. I'll, I'll, I'll run up the rocky uh, steps. Find us on Facebook and please join us in this endeavor. <laughs> oh, with the eye of the tiger. We'll, 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 do, we'll do the karate kid. You're the best. Around. <laughs> oh, God. Nobody's I haven't seen that movie in forever. Around. You're the best. Around. <laughs> I'd sing like that for you. Yeah. Oh. But, um,. Okay, so he ate a record 72 hot dogs. What number do you think he's going to get this year? 76. So you think he's going to beat it? I think he's going to beat it. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to say like 75, I think. 
I'm going to be conservative about it. And next episode, we'll see if, uh, which we'll one see, of us got closer. We'll see uh, the price is right on that one. The price is wrong. <laughs> um, so, more 4th of July stuff. Um, is uh, I We always have some really good, funny memories of 4th of July. Uh, do you have any like funny, funny memories or childhood memories when you were a kid of 4th of July? Because I got like couple of stories. I, I want you to go first and I'm going to okay. think of mine. Okay. So, um, we, uh, I have a funny fireworks story. It's not funny, but it's funny at the same time. Oh, excuse me. Um, so I must've been like five or six years old. And, uh, my friend George, who used to live on the block, of my, the block that I live on, um, his, his dad bought, uh, fireworks. And it was this one fire where he put it on like this small dolly or like a car or something. I don't remember what it was. And they have a driveway that leads out to, to the street. And my street's not really, I don't want to say it's like an active street. Kind of is because I live right across the street from the school. Right. So it's like, it's kind of active. So he puts the firework and he lights the firework. And he pushes the firework out into the street. And you see the little wire getting shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. It gets to the point where you're like, ooh, it's going to go off. Any second now, any second now, a car drives underneath it. Oh, my God. <laughs> and it passes by, not like by like the smidge of passing by, it goes off. Really? And I still remember vividly to this day, free, not freaking out, but I was like, oh, my, as a little kid, oh, my God, we almost blew a car up. Can you imagine? That, I'm speechless. That's I mean, pretty, that's insane. I mean, his dad wasn't the brightest, but like at the <laughs> same time, I don't remember if it was like a parked car, if it was a car car, but that was one memory that I thought that was just hilarious. I but, tend to do a lot of hopping around from party to party mm, as Mr. Popular, and I really mean that in air quotes on that one. Mr. Popular. So last year... I did three parties in one day. Mm. All by train. I did not drive once that entire day. So I had and, to... And, and I just want to point out, Jerry, that before you drove, when I when I knew you early in the early 2010s... Yes. And, and I knew you, you didn't have a driver's license. Not at the time. And you went and you used to do all those... Music events that you used to run, and you tra traveled everywhere by bus and by train with money boxes. Yeah. So when you're telling me, yeah, and it's pretty daunting, especially at like two in the morning. Um, so like when you're telling me, I just want to tell everybody this. That's like so when you're saying you went around train, train. He's telling the truth, and it's hundred percent. He On used Staten to, Island, and he used to travel around like that all the time, going three different places, taking trains. So this is yeah. So. So, Continue, I'm sorry. I, I took the train about 30 minutes to Old Town from where I am. So I go to a party for about three or four hours, but then I go to another party later on. I'm going to say like 6.30, 7 o'clock-ish. I had to completely prepare. I went to a deli. I got like a 12-pack, the same that I did from before, and then I got like a whole range of, of uh, desserts. I was walking for about a mile before I got to the house. <laughs> And you always bring like all about desserts. to drink and drive, guys. Well, you you always you always bring the most desserts, the most random desserts. What it was not Fourth of July, but there was one time. Were you there for Kyle's party, twenty fifteen? Remember that one time I brought about fifty cupcakes with me. Yes, yes. You were there for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I I go to the supermarket completely spontaneous, and I was gonna get like a small cake or something like that. I see, like, this big assortment of cupcakes. And I was exaggerating a little bit on 50. I'm going to say it was, like, 36 in one, like, batch. Oh, and I buy the whole thing. I run to the house, and I'm just like, cupcakes for everyone! Oh, I, I don't remember if this was for... I think it might have been 4th of July, but... Remember Ian's backyard party? Um, where it was me, Nick... The Rice Krispie Treat. The Rice Krispie Treat. Yes. So I'm going to... I'm going to... Just, just picture this. So we... we <laughs> It's the big rice, it's the big family rice krispie treats that you would get from Seven Eleven, and uh, Nick bought two of them, and he walks into the backyard like uh, like um, Bell Brooks from uh, from History of the World Part One, 
And he goes, <laughs> and he drops it. He walks in. He goes, the Ten Commandments. The ten, and <laughs> oh, then, yeah, I remember that. And then that. he drops it, and he goes, oh, the Five Commandments. Because <laughs> it was 5,000. Yeah, because it was... Cause it, it's it, amazing. It, no, because it, 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 it was a five-pound... Uh, right. Because um, uh, he said two Yeah, like the ten-pound, the five-pound. That was beautiful. Oh, I still remember that like it was oh, yesterday. We we always we always talk about it. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all the Fourth of July things I could think of off, off the top of my head. Until next Fourth of July. Yeah, until next Fourth of July. Um, speaking of places that won't be celebrating Fourth of July, Toys R Us finally closed. We talked about this on the second episode, I believe. Yeah. The closing last over the weekend was the last one that closed finally. How does it feel to you now that it finally, like, hit? Like, that it's closed, even though you still use the word there? I'm a little... Is it, ki- is it kind of, like, bittersweet? No, it's bittersweet. It's like, when I worked there, I knew, like, it's... it's you know, I understood why, like, yeah, no, like... It, the, the way it was ran and the way everything, it was like, it's not... Because when they push signing people up for credit cards and rewards cards and you're pushing and you're pushing, you're going to alienate people. And I alienated a lot of people as a cash register, as a cashier trying to get metrics up. And I even understood it's like, not, it's not everything. People just want to come in, especially when I lived in a neighborhood that's not, um, the income bracket's not that, you know, right. that high. It, and, so you worked in New York, right? Yeah. So like... When you're pushing people like, hey, sign up for a credit card, and maybe they don't have the best credit, right? Or they, or they, uh, you know, I'm trying to choose my words wisely. Like they don't look like they're like, they, they, they look like they um, saved up a lot of money just to buy something for their kid. Exactly. And maybe and you're gonna push that. And on you're them. gonna push a credit card on them, and then you get yelled at when you don't get uh, when you don't reach your quota. Because every day it was you as an individual had to do three credit card signups. Yeah. Which then, for a store like that, you know, at the time, it wasn't low, getting so much yeah. traction. I mean, it's it's a low number, but at the same time, it's, you know, if you got, for me, if I got one credit card sign up, to me, that was like a victory. There would be days I wouldn't get any. And if I got yeah. one, it was like, it was like, oh my God, I achieved it. I was like, I got, I got a credit card sign up. I'm so happy. <laughs> but yeah it's like uh, and I used to yell at them all the time these people don't want to sign for credit cards I'm not going to push it and they would be push it push it uh, so yeah. I think we should speak to HR about it yeah well but it's funny because uh, one of my friends on Facebook wrote down you, you think if I put down vice president of Toys R Us that, that anybody will question it they can't call anybody to, to, to double check to see if I really was you really are you've been saying a lot of good ideas so far yeah, on this oh, episode yeah, but the no, market I'm gonna do it. It's it's and funny. I didn't even work there. It's funny. The marketing post closing is hilarious because they got somebody dressed up. Um, uh, one of the employees dressed up as Jeffrey the giraffe, and he got all retirement clothes. And right. He's waving. Um, somebody put down, "Oh, you, all you assholes, don't or care about me now." But why didn't you care me when I care about me when I was open? That was funny. Triple H from WWE invited him to the performance center. I was like, yeah, really? I'll, I'll, I'll give you I a didn't job. Know about that. Yeah, I'll give you a job. You see, uh, you see Jeffrey G- the Giraffe taking bumps in the wrestling ring. It's, it's, it's <laughs> That's hilarious. funny. It's hilarious. But yeah, but it's bittersweet. I'll always be a Toys R Us kid. Yeah, I'll always be a Toys R Us employee. <laughs> always see Toys R Us until mm. this weekend. But they're they're talking about doing pop-up stores or some type of resurrection of Toys R Us. I don't think it's down yet. They shouldn't do it right away, though. Yeah, they shouldn't do it. They gotta. They should wait at least a year before yeah. they do it. But, you know, we could do a whole podcast on why Toys R Us closed. And maybe we will, but right. who knows. But there's tons of factors. Uh, anything Anything else you want to add about Toys R Us? Or Where else can I buy more toys on Staten Island, Christian? <laughs> Dapier, Dapier. Uh, <laughs> well, speaking of Dapier, good segue. Speaking of Dapier, we're gonna go to our sponsors, and we'll come right back, Jerry. Beautiful. As, as he's as he's trying not to crack up. All right, we'll be right back. Episode of Collective Podcasting is sponsored by Dapier. They're on 1970 Victory Boulevard. You like Italian cooking? Absolutely. Well, this is authentic Southern Italian cooking. They have a chef directly from Italy which is in the city. Um, great Italian food. 
They have they have pizza. They have um, uh, sandwiches, authentic, real authentic Italian food. Ate that last week. Really great. I suggest everybody go and uh, tell them the Caputo Collective sent you. Yes, we are. Second half of the eighth episode of the first season of the meeting before the meeting. Are we going to have a season two? Uh, yes. Season two appears next year. <laughs> <laughs> so the half of that half, half of the of year. It. It's the half of the half. It's of like the my half. coffee. Yes. It's your coffee. I, I don't know where we're going with this, but okay. But before we get into the big topic, Jerry, that I've been keeping a secret, um, which if you follow on, on uh, Facebook... It's not a secret because I'll probably be promoting the shit out of it. Is uh, we have uh, everybody knows I'm a wrestling fan. Jerry just nodding his head again. Always, uh, but not ignoring you. Japan, New Japan's having their G1 climax. Ooh. And Jerry, don't look at me with the sexual innuendo. It's not that type of, you know, climaxing. But uh, I, I digress. But uh, <laughs> but so uh, G1 climax is a Red Robin tournament. Where well, it's like you, it's you, you, it's you, yeah, Red Robin, yum. You don't get eliminated. You just get points. It's like a point system. Where, and whoever two have the highest two points in their respective block, wrestle each other, and whoever wins that gets to wrestle the champion January fourth at Wrestle Kingdom. Another audio issue, but it's getting less and less. Strike two, two, guys. Strike two. So Wrestle Kingdom, G One Climax. Uh, New Japan. Uh, I'm just going to quickly read off the names and then we'll get into our uh, big topic. Uh, let's just get to it. Uh, Is it Hayachi from Tekken? No. Nah. In Block A, it's Michael Elgin, Evil, Bad Luck Fale, Togi Maccabee, Mac, uh, Kazuchika Okada, who just coming off his big 700 and something day championship run. Hangman Page of the Bullet Club, Minoshu Suzuki, Hiro Hiroshi Tanahashi, Switchblade Jay White, and Yoshihashi. In Block B, it's Haruki Goto, Kota Ibushi, Tomohiro Ishii, Tezusia Naito, Kenny Omega, Juice Robinson, Zack Sabre Jr., Sanada, Tamatonga, and Toro Yano. I'm speechless. I think, um... Where, where is he? Where is he? I think Yoshi's gonna win. Yoshi? Yeah. I think, uh, Kota Ibushi's gonna win. You know, Yoshi is such a prominent character in Mario Kart. Uh, I, I think, uh, Ibushi's gonna win, because him and Kenny Omega, who's the champion, have a history. So, I think that's gonna be the main event of Wrestle Kingdom 12. Uh, 13, which is going to be next year. Do you think we could participate in that? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, I mean, okay. I just got my passport, so why not? Let's go to Japan. Yeah, let's go. Uh, all right, so the big topic. The big topic. Oh, I'm going to keep the drum roll going until the end of this podcast. Uh, <laughs> me and Jerry last night, we went speed dating. Yeah. One golf clap at a time, guys. So we're going to... Talk about our experience real quick. We're just happy then, we have each other. Yeah. <laughs> we're just going to go over our experience. Um, we're not going to name any names. Christian. No, we're not going to name any names. <laughs> we're not going to name any names for privacy and stuff. But, Jerry, so we did this once before back in December in between Christmas and New Year's. Oh, yeah. Uh, so what, compared then to now, how is, what, what do you think? Brooklyn you think? is a million times more laid back. Hmm. Even, like, the five minutes that you spend with each person, mm -hmm. there was more leniency to actually talk to them after the fact, and I felt like at the first one that we did, it was very, like, not cutthroat, but it was a little shallow. So for me... Like, I couldn't really interact with people, like, afterwards. And I felt like it kind of took away the, 
took away the purpose because, you know, it takes more than five minutes to get to know somebody and to see how you can move things forward. Mm. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, well, I mean, last December, from what I remember, is that um, there were a lot of tourists. So, uh, I That's think that... That's a good that, point. Yeah, I think that had something to do. Yes, yesterday, yeah, it was it was pretty interesting. Uh, there was a lot less people than last time. Yeah. Um, what what stood out? Like what? Don't name names. What stood out? <laughs> what stood out? Us two. We were like the we were the spokespeople of Staten Island. Yeah. We really just you know had our suave going. Obviously. Suave. Jerry Jerry being suave with his with his uh. Yeah, I do, uh, no problem. No. <laughs> or, uh, I, I didn't see your head, So, what, you, you've overheard, like, conversations no, and stuff? No, no I, didn't, I didn't. No, but everybody, it's funny, because they all go, when I mentioned you, they were like, oh, you here with somebody? I said, yeah, yeah, my, my, my friend Jerry. They go, oh, Jerry, that guy, he's so nice. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, and then yeah. when I mentioned you, they're like, oh, he's sexy. Oh, God. I was like, oh, him, oh, man, oh. what's he doing here? No. Um, so, yeah, so, uh, it, no, go. You go. really, I have to say, Christian, for a Brooklyn event, you really fit the hipster component quite well yesterday. I was proud of your look for it, and I could tell that you're going to get all the matches and the leg in the world. <laughs> uh, why? Because I had... The beard? The suave, man. The suave, man. That's How our new, suave? That is our new word. Suave. How was I suave? Was I like James Bond suave? Or was I just like... You know how to handle yourself with poker face. Like, you're, you're very good with that. Even like if you're expressing yourself like in a positive or more like, you know, when you're explaining something, you have a good way of like not overexerting yourself. And I feel like that's a good thing because it shows that you're level-headed. What you trying? This is like... I'm, I'm trying to say that we're meant for each other. <laughs> no, no. Uh, we, so like my poker face is like I didn't look ner nervous or, or something like. That. Not for what I noticed. Mm. Uh, hmm. that's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, because I'm always nervous. <laughs> I know the one. The one girl was like, "Oh, you nervous?" I think she asked you oh, the yeah. same question. I, I feel like she asked every guy that. It's like, "Oh, you nervous?" <laughs> is that is that like your pickup line to them? She's like, "Hey, baby, you nervous?" And like, they're yeah, like, I'm always <laughs> "They're like, you're guaranteeing erectile dysfunction from that one." No, it's it's I'm the Hulk. That's my secret, Jerry. <laughs> I'm always nervous. <laughs> I got a weird echo going on. I don't know why. Um, anyway. I get an echo in my ear. You hear the girl from yesterday <laughs> in your thoughts. You're like, are you ner ner nervous? Oh, uh, what are you making fun of my speech impediment? No. Um, anyway. Um, other, uh, what, what stood out? What else stood out to you? Another thing that stood out to me was... Oh, this is funny. So when we walked in, there was a few like people that were by the bar. Mm -hmm. And there was this guy who wasn't doing speed dating, but honestly fit the requirements for any movie that had to do with speed dating. Mm. It was the guy to the left of me when I was getting a drink. Oh, yeah. And he was like, oh, yeah, you know, all the girls in the other countries, you know, this country, it has the easiest girls to, like, get with and stuff like that. And I'm just like, this guy is really qualified to go upstairs. Oh, yeah, that's that's his that's his pickup line. He's like, oh, yeah, you know. Like... That's, how, that's how he's a traveling man. As he's traveling... <laughs> he's a traveling man for that. Oh, he's a traveling man. Um, yes, yeah, so there was... Eight eight guys and, like, six girls. Which right. I thought was funny, because we, like, stood in, in the corner in between. So oh, yeah, because we both, like... We we didn't have, like, a girl to go around for us, yeah. so we both had to take a break at the same time. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was funny. And we were, and we were talking about um, Black Mirror to, like, the host. Yeah. Um, which is just a creepy show to begin with but that's besides the point um so so jerry the number one question do you think we're gonna you, match yeah do you think that you made a connection so it, i saw on the on the site in, mm. in quotations again okay so it says that it, uh it takes up to five days to see like you know it's it's kind of like a five-day window 
to see if you get a match with somebody from that. And then if not, you have to move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. So we got to really spiff up our profiles, suits and ties, popped collars, the great stuff. Well, I got a suit and tie picture, so that's funny. But I got a button down somewhere. Speaking of like... In my closet. Speaking of speed dating, um, I, it's, it's funny because I found an article in the advance today which is funny because we were talking about this and it was confessions of, of a matchmaker and I thought that was pretty funny I have to take my headphones off because the echo of my headphones is annoying the hell out of me oh I even hear um, it from here yeah you hear it yeah, yeah. Um, so confessions of a matchmaker so a professional fixer upper dishes on New York men's ridiculous requests some men requesting 18 year olds you got problems oh boy <laughs> implants and someone who looks like Scarlett Johansson's face on a yoga instructor's body. That's a nothing, great segue. N- nothing about personality or like, you know, uh, hey, I want her to be nice or like a r- religious or ethic or ethnicity based. It was all like, I wanted them to look like Scarlett Johansson or else I'm not going to be with anybody. Do you feel like they just say that? For the coverage itself, like, you know, having those, like, ridiculous requirements. Because I feel like, you know, we always chastise what the stereotypes are about, like, speed dating or just stuff with dating itself. And then the more people I talk to, it's like, no one really shares that, but it just comes out that way. It does. It does. But it's it's funny because um, I feel like that um, a lot of the times... With these uh, people that go like, yo, I want Scarlett Johansson's body, or I want, um, uh, uh, this, I want somebody with like big implants. <laughs> it's usually the guys that big are. I, I don't want to throw anybody underneath the bus or like make fun of anybody, but it's like it always looks like it's those juiced up meatheads. Right. Like yo, I got like a six pack and like twenty four inch pythons, and, and I I want like a model, supermodel. And I got Scarlett Johansson's face on a yoga instructor's body. Yeah. Date me now. Oh, God. Look at me. I'm, uh, but it's funny because, like, she puts down, like, um, so many wanted a woman who looked like Scarlett Johansson, and that's just started abbreviating her name with, with quotations, like, Scarlett Johansson. Hmm. And if that didn't seem stringent enough a requirement, she had one guy that wanted Scarlett Johansson's face on a yoga instructor body. Um, so, yeah, so... You're, are, are you a Scarlett Johansson fan? I am. Yeah? So you... I so, thought she was great in the Avengers. Yeah. It's just funny, because, like... I, I don't know. I just think it's, like, a little, a little petty. When he's like, yo, it's like, I have a specific type. And they're human, too, like, all these celebrities and stuff. Yeah. Like, I hate when they just put them on a pedestal like that. Well, this is me. I, I have some people always ask me, what's my type? And I always say, look, if I find you attractive, it doesn't matter, like, if you're big, small, right, ethnicity, whatever. It's like, yeah, look, you're attractive to me, you're attractive to me. I don't have this, like, they have to look like this. I'm the same way. Yeah. It's like, I usually go for, like, the eyes first, and then the smile. I see, I'm I'm the same way as far as, like, with the eyes. The smile, not as much, because it depends on the conversation. No, like... I I really go for the body language. That's the big thing with me. No, like, if... uh, (laughs) It, I thought you were going to say, like, I go for the body. The no. body. No, but it's, um, if, uh, if you have a nice smile and nice eyes, it's, you, you pretty much fit the criteria. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Um, we, tr- okay, okay. So, we tried to get Joe to come with us speed day. He's going to kill us. Yeah, he's, he's going to kill us. And I joked with him, and I said, yeah, you could finally come on the podcast. It's the circle life. Yeah. Um, and Joe's like, yeah, I don't know, I don't want to, but I don't want to make fun of him. I'm trying to get him up a, a fan base, but yeah. And the easiest way out is to do <laughs> stuff like this. No, it's, it's, I'm joking, Joe, I love you. Fun of him. But yeah, but yeah, so, uh, Anything else you want to add for the speed dating? I think we should host it ourselves. Yeah. So in my apartment, Jerry's going to do sing to sunrise (laughs) speed (laughs) Speed dating. dating. Speed dating. (laughs) Hosted at (laughs) Da (laughs) Piera. This is going to be the most inclusive event you can imagine. Our sponsors are going to be proud. Our fans are going to be proud, and I mean that by only Joe Valanti's going to be proud. 
Oh, good lord. He, he, he just... If he hates us, he hates us more every podcast. <laughs> oh, but we are going to have him on. It's just, you're just never going to know when. And he's never going to... It's going to be at the event. Yeah, it's going to be at the event. But, um, so yeah. So that's, uh... I'm shocked we went almost an hour. I didn't think we, we were going to go an hour. I really? I we were going to go like 30 minutes. But yeah. But, uh, we went pretty good. We tried to get a guest on today, but... Um, oh, yeah. So I'll mention, uh, I'll mention who we were trying to get on. Yeah. So, yeah. Craig Lloydrin... Very funny local comedian on Staten Island has had a lot of big successes as well. Uh, he has toured with Pete Davidson. He's opened up for him. He has a lot of success in the comedy world, particularly in the metropolitan area. Definitely a big uh, person for what we have going on in the comedy scene here. So very excited when we do have him on. He was supposed to come on today, but then schedule conflicts occurred. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully by the next time we do this, we will have him on. Yeah, definitely. And if it's anything like when we recorded with Chris Marcianti, because uh, um, I don't know if I mentioned it like before, before we had Chris Marcianti on, we were recording for his uh, Satanic Mingle. Um, uh, came out amazing. Oh yeah, his, his Satanic Mingle. It um, just like came comedy, out a couple days ago. Comedy commercial, making fun of like dating sites, which you could find on his video. If you go on Vimeo, it's Guerrilla Revolution Productions and it's Satanic Mingle. Hilarious. Where you can find all of his all of his great work. Um, the Last Laugh trailer, all, all of his other work. Hilarious. I laugh every time. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk to him about that on the next episode. But he was so hilarious. He had us in stitches for like two hours while we were trying to record the voiceovers and the ADR for, for the uh, for the Satanic Mingle. He just had us in stitches, but when we do have one, I don't know how long the podcast is going to be. We might have to split it into two podcasts because we just might just keep going. <laughs> oh, with him? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, and, yeah. Um, uh, especially with John Gregorio, that almost got split in into two episodes. If it would have went two hours, it would have been two a two-parter. Right. Which would have been cool. But, um, yeah. So, John, we'll have you on next time. We're going to break records. Well, I talked to John yesterday, and we were, and we were talking about when all the video games do come out that we talked about. We're going to do like a... You should do a video review, like yeah. a video game of it. Well, yeah, well, by the time all the video games come out, we'll be doing the video podcast. Good. So, yeah, so we'll have him on, we'll have the screen, and we'll yes. play, and we'll, it'll be really cool. But, um, yeah, so, uh, everybody, uh, thank you for listening. So, yeah, so, this is Christian and Jerry, and that's the end of the podcast, so thank you for listening, everybody. But remember, Jerry... Yeah.